Hope you are enjoying this conversation with Gary Bamberger, a seasoned enterprise agile coach. In part one, Gary and I touched on the basics of coaching. We discussed what is coaching and the benefits of coaching. We also looked into the differences between coaching and agile coaching. Gary also addressed the common misconception of coaches providing the solution. And he also shared some of the tools from his coaching toolbox. Let's rejoin the conversation as we continue this exploration, going deeper and deeper into the world of agile coaching. So, so with this, like uh, I know, I know you've been doing coaching for quite some time. Uh, you worked with many clients, many teams. I'm sure you have your own toolbox. So, if you can share some of the tools that you have used in the past some of the tools that can help our audience as well. Yeah, great. So um, I, th I think um, some of the tools that I've used in, from a coaching standpoint, and particularly in agile coaching more, I, it are, are things like, you know, coming becoming clear about what's the mission. What is that big A agenda? We don't necessarily call it that in agile coaching but it's what's the outcomes that we're looking for? What problems or challenges or benefits are we looking for? What are the outcomes? So that to me is, is key because then that sets up the, the relationship, right? So in, in, um, in coaching, we talk about, you know, designing the alliance as well. So how are we gonna be in relationship with each other? I think that's an important thing in agile coaching as well. Right. What am I as coach expected to do? What can you expect me to do as your agile coach versus what am I expecting you to do? Right. Um, so really setting up those those boundaries and, and laying out what those expectations are. And then we have things like, you know, using powerful questions, which are basically open ended questions, starting with what typically or or um, uh, or how at times. Um, and really, really getting curious. That's another tool, right? Being very curious about what, what's going on, what they're thinking, how they're moving forward, what the, what the situation is. And I think along with that is, is, you know, listening, listening is key. And it's, um, you know, there's, there's multiple levels of listening, but, you know, to me, listening is like one of the key aspects of this, because you're, you're listening at a global level as a coach so that you're not just listening to the words they're saying, but you're listening for, for uh, other elements like energy and um, what they're not saying, how they're saying it, what, what language are they using? Are they coming from a positive place or a negative place when they're talking about this topic, right? Because that, that might be an opportunity to use different perspectives to help them to explore that a little bit. Um, and I think like we talked about championing the client or the team or whatever, right? I think that's huge, right? Seeing them and reflecting back to them what you're, what I'm seeing as a coach is critical, right? Like showing them the progress that they've made, showing them how they're interacting with each other. And is it in, in alignment with their values as a team? I mean, those things are, are really critical. Um, and acknowledging how they are in the day-to-day -day activities, right? And, and pointing out, yeah, you know, this was a great daily scrum meeting and this is why, and this is what I saw, and this is how you're helping each other out or whatever the situation is, really calling those things out and acknowledging them and calling them forth in that way so that they can say, oh yeah, we did do that. Oh, wow, we're really rocking this, right? And getting the, the energy pumped up and getting them to see themselves from a different perspective, from a, out, outside of themselves. Great, great. And, and, and I'm, I'm completely with you on that. You know, there's a lot of conversations happening, right? Uh, so we are, we are always kind of having conversations at different levels with the client. For that, one of the, one of the tool that you mentioned was that arc of coaching conversation as to how do we design that conversation? How do we guide that conversation? You are using the questions as the tool again to guide that conversation. Right? And as you mentioned, yes, definitely. If 
If you are having the conversation but not able to listen, then it's a waste of your time as well as the client's time. So the better you are at listening, the better you will become as a coach. And I think I think that is that is the biggest challenge in today's world of these mobiles. People's attention span is so small for them to be able to stay focused on this conversation. For example, when we are having this conversation, I have nothing else going on up there. You know, I'm completely in this moment. And I think that that's the biggest challenge for a lot of people as to staying in the present moment, you know, being in the present moment and and giving full 100% of you to your client because the client has something to share. For that, I, I often kind of encourage people to start doing some kind of meditation, build that into your routine, even if it is a minute. You know, and there are a lot of different ways to do meditation, right? It, it It's not like a, when we say meditation, people think of, uh, you know, the monk and sitting in that lotus position and all that. It's it's more than that. Great. All these tools uh, definitely can help you. Let, let's uh, sh- shift a little bit. Uh, earlier, you mentioned uh, uh, we talked about the clients, right? Uh, the client could be individual team or executive uh, so with that, I think uh, there are different levels of coaching also, right? You mentioned coaching a team versus coaching individual. It's different, right? Different challenges, different tools we will use. So if you can talk a little bit about what are the different levels of coaching and what each level kind of entails, if you want. When I think of, when I think of again, from an agile coaching standpoint, um, you're spot on, right? There's There's multiple... Um, levels uh, of or interaction, I'll say, right? So we have we have things like you know, so we have individuals, right? So we can coach individuals, and oftentimes in in a team setting, we're still going to coach individuals separately, right? So or you know individually, so that there's there's like the cohort mindset, right, where it's the group which has or has relationships and has energy in and of itself, that whole group relationship. And then there's the individual. So, you know, we still have the individual aspect. We have the group aspect. And, and you know, from a, from a group standpoint, we're doing things like how do we, how do we accelerate the, the team through the forming, storming, norming, performing, right? So that they can get to that performing state much more quickly. And, and we can, we can maybe short circuit or, or shortcut the aspects around the storming phase, right? What are some things that we can do to lessen that disruption? Um, because oftentimes we're coming into a team that's expected to perform. We're, you know, it's, uh, the analogy I use is we're driving down the road at, you know, 90 miles an hour and we're going to look to change the tires, Right. Well, uh, you know, so it's, you know, we look to minimize the amount of disruption and there's going to be disruption if we're taking a team into, an, you know, uh, an agile environment um, for the very first time, there's going to be disruption. So how do we minimize that? And so, you know, some of the techniques that we use at a team level, we will are there to minimize that disruption. Right. So, and then we can take it a level higher and we can talk about programs. So teams of teams. So what do we need to do there, right? Bigger audience, how do we orchestrate things? Um, I think from a, from an agile coaching standpoint, one of the key elements, particularly with um, managers and executives is reinforcing that systems thinking and helping them to see how they're, how, uh, how the system operates today and what the, an optimal system would look like or a more optimal and incrementally more optimal system would look like. <clears throat> and then running the experiments, being free and, and you know, having that growth mindset to actually run the experiment to find out, right? Does this actually work in this environment or not? Um, so I think that, you know, for, for executives, uh, and and leaders in the organization, frontline managers, et cetera. I think those are those are key things that they need to learn about. And again, that goes into the teaching aspect and the and the mentoring aspect. I think with with executives, the other as, uh, the other thing that's really important that I've seen is <clears throat> having them lead the change process. 
right? So there's a certain amount of education, mentoring, and coaching that goes along with, you know, how do we how do we change the organization? How do we move the organization forward? And I think, uh, uh, oh, you know, when we are talking about the teams, right, uh, the coaching would be different uh, based on the team also, right? Uh, there are two scenarios that come to mind, like oftentimes you are coaching a new team, like taking a new team and taking them on to their agile journey. So that's one scenario. On the other hand, you may be handed a team that has been do- doing so-called agile. If you talk to the team, they'll say, hey, we know agile, we do agile, but you are thrown into that scenario saying, go coach this team, right? So the coaching approach, the tools that you use, again, would be different in these two scenarios. Even though it is team coaching, it would be different. To some extent, you know, like, yes, as as a coach, you can have kind of a template, if you want to call it, as to, hey, if I do a team level coaching, these are the things, these are the 50 things I do. But then it is, you cannot definitely apply it as like, you know, with every team. Every team is different. The the makeup is different. They are at a different level in their journey also. So all those factors will decide as to what is your final approach going to be as far as coaching is concerned. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 the goals that they want to what what are what are the outcomes that they're looking for even get into that right that will tailor. So so the will tailor the approach to the coaching. And so really understanding what the outcomes are and the context of the organization are, are critical to a successful engagement, right? And, and successfully launching, you know, an, an agile engagement or a team or whatever it is, right? It, it, those are necessary. I, I you know, I'm, I'm constantly looking for more information. I have a, like a, a, a list of questions that I can ask of executives and and leaders in the organization, you know, the scrum masters, the business folks, the IT folks, et cetera, so that I can, I can learn what's, what's the context like today and where do you want to get to? Because that's the, the, the critical thing, right? And then we can map out together collaboratively, we can map out what that journey looks like at an initial pass and it will change. Right, we know it's going to change. It's not written in stone. It's a roadmap that's going to evolve as we learn and as we we encounter uh, both successes and failures. Right. All right. Let's hit that pause button here and review what we have discussed so far, including part one and part two. So far, we have talked about coaching toolbox, levels of coaching, conversations as a coaching tool arc of coaching conversation to structure that conversation. Powerful open-ended question to guide your conversation. Listening and being present in the present moment and meditation as a tool to improve your listening skills. And we also talked about various scenarios regarding team coaching. I want to spend few seconds here on levels of coaching. As a coach, you may be working at different levels. You may be working as a team coach or you may be working as an enterprise coach. So you are working at different levels, be it a team level, be it an enterprise level or somewhere in between as a domain coach. Each level involves different responsibilities, different sets of activities, different focus and different reach within the organization. So what level you are operating at? An even more important question is where do you want to go? We can help in speeding up that journey. If you allow us to be your guide, your partner, and mentor on that journey. Join us next week as we take this conversation further into additional interesting areas. Until then, keep changing the world. This episode is sponsored by Eric Solutions. Are you ready to take your agile coaching journey to the next level? 
want to shift your journey into next gear join nimesh at the next agile coaching boot camp join us for highly experiential fun filled workshop and earn two highly sought after certifications we also offer 3 months of ongoing coaching and mentoring so are you ready to take the plunge join the workshop you'll get agile team facilitation agile coaching certification those are the two certifications so one workshop two certifications three months of ongoing coaching and mentoring so register now